Agent Planet. Hmm, everyone's going on about how we need to build more houses, so I thought I would try and help out. I've got Dad's walking map. I'm sure I can use it to find somewhere. Hmm, that looks like a nice open space, but the brown lines are very close together, which means it's a bit hilly. You don't want to be walking up the side of a mountain to get home. And this space is sandwiched between a motorway and a railway line. Good for getting around. Well, if there was a motorway junction or a railway station nearby, but not very quiet. Ah, this looks like the perfect place for a new town. There's a massive empty area next to this enormous river. There's nothing there at all as far as I can tell. And it looks beautifully flat. Nope. Hi, Agent Planet. What do you mean, nope? It's perfect. Still, nope. Isn't that enormous river giving you a bit of a clue about why you might not want to build there? Might be nice to live near a river. You could go fishing, paddling, take a boat ride? Nope. Hang on. Sounds like rain. Rain and rivers? Gosh. Rain and enormous rivers? <gasps> Gosh, now, what's the connection between these two things, I wonder? Oh, I get it. Rivers can flood when there's heavy rainfall. Finally! Thought you'd never get it. Yep, flat areas around rivers are called floodplains, and there's a clue in the name. Those fields may be underwater for weeks at a time after heavy rainfall. Now, it's not that you can't build on floodplains. Lots of houses are built on floodplains even today. Well, that sounds like rubbish planning. Not necessarily. On some floodplains, the risk is fairly low. People who live there need to be prepared for floods, but flooding might not actually happen whilst they're living there. There might also be other things about the area that makes it worth the risk. It's often quite easy to build on floodplains too because the land is flat. Which means housing can be built more quickly. That's right. Also, a river might have been much smaller a few centuries ago when the village or town sprung up. A tiny brook isn't much of a flooding risk, so when the houses were built, flooding wasn't a problem at all for the people who lived there. I guess that's why town planners need to think about how things might change in the future. Exactly. Especially as nowadays we are lucky to understand more about how the climate affects our living spaces how changes can lead to more rainfall, and how that might literally change the landscape. Yes, isn't the temperature expected to rise? It's certainly possible, and that leads to another problem for planners to solve. It's getting hot in here. Hey, Agent Planet, are you making the heat go up? Just a little bit more. Phew, maybe planners need to get more enormous fans to cool everyone down. Not a bad idea. Planners can certainly encourage people to make new buildings more comfortable in higher temperatures, as well as thinking about the impact the buildings and the towns have on the environment. No sense in making the problem worse. But what about people who live on floodplains now? Will they need to move? I don't expect that anyone wants to end up underwater. It's true that some places where people live today might not be places where they can live in the future. But planning is all about solving problems. Floodplains can be managed, vegetation can be planted to make barriers, and houses can be built on stilts to be above the water level, or even on floats so they rise and fall with the water. Making most of the land we have, wherever it is. Exactly! Time for me to fly. Keep looking on that map, though. I wonder if you can spot any other places where new houses might be built. I'm on it. See you later, Agent Planet. Agent Planet, created with support from the Royal Town Planning Institute. Find out more at funkidslive.com agent. <laughs>